This time we're going to talk about the deviation from the ideal cycle to the actual one. Remember, if you remember in the ideal cycles we make some assumptions like we don't have any fluid friction and we don't have any heat losses to the surroundings, neither in the parts or in the connecting rods. So the first of all will be the fluid friction which, which cause um, pressure drop. You can see that pressure drop in this slanted line uh, in the boiler instead of having a straight line two to three now we have a line that changes the pressure is not constant anymore um, this effect will create that we need more heat to get to the same temperature uh, the second part is the loss of the, the, the heat loss to the surroundings uh, this is especially true in the turbine we don't have a uh, isentropic process anymore we have fluid friction and we have some heat transferred to the surroundings so we have a non-isentropic turbine we could have the same with pump and in order to account for the irreversibilities we define an, an isentropic efficiency both for the turbine and for the pump um, we define the isentropic efficiency for the pump as the ratio of Isentropic work by the way, actual work. While in the turbine, we define the actual work to the isentropic work. Uh, in the pump, as you can see, the efficiency, the isentropic efficiency will create that the work of the pump will rise. For the turbine, it will be the other way. The isentropic efficiency will, will give us a result at less work. And as we mentioned before, we will need more heat. Uh, due to the pressure drops. So the effect of all of this will be to um, reduce the efficiency, the complete efficiency of the cycle. In the ideal cycle, we also define that we have um, saturated liquid at the start of the cycle. What we usually do is we subcool a little bit and uh, we subcool uh, this water in order to avoid cavitation. Cavitation is the sudden um, change of phase because of pressure fluctuations inside the pump and this could have very bad effects on the pump. In this video you can see the water boiling, it's in the white areas and this can cause corrosion to the pump. So now we're going to talk about how we can increase the efficiency of the ranking cycle. And uh, recall that the work of the, the network of the cycle is included in the area inside the diagram. So one way of visualizing is that we would need we would like to increase this area. One way will be lowering the condenser pressure. Lowering the condenser pressure will add this extra network from the turbine from the cycle while we are um, requiring only this small amount of extra pump work so obviously the trade-off is good before we pass to the superheating let me uh, just first that as we have said we don't have a free lunch so we have some side effects the first of all is if we uh, lower the condensing pressure we will increase the moisture content at the end of the turbine as you can see when we move from four for prime and we already know that the effects of that moisture will be um, corrosion it also will need a uh, stiffer heat exchanger since we have a lower temp lower pressure the, the pressure difference with the ambient will cause something like this uh, you can see that if we have water vapor and we have it at very low temperatures as indicated by these uh, umbrellas uh, we can collapse. So that's the second side effect. A way to increase the efficiency will be to superheat the vapor to a high temperatures. Uh, we can increase from 3 to 2 prime and we add the area in pink to the network. This increase in temperature is limited by metallurgical considerations. That means the material that we have in the turbine or in the boiler. Right now it's about 620. So if that may be the maximum that we can get so if we pinpoint a cycle to the maximum temperature in a tree 
and we increase the pressure to tree prime, we'll have an increasing network in the like the one in the pink area, while we are decreasing an amount shaded in gray. Um, the idea is that the trade-off will be higher. I mean, we are increasing more than we are decreasing. Another plants are using supercritical pressures that will have uh, the problem that we will have changing phases in the boiler. So one thing that we can take advantage is try to combine both. I mean, we increase the pressure and increase the temperature and try to get both cycles. To do that, we are adding an extra heat. We extract pressure, we extract vapor from the turbine, we heat it again, and when and then we pass it to a low pressure boiler. So that vapor that we extract, we pass it to a reheat section as is shown as one shown in the video. And then we can gain both areas. We typically get a 45% increase in efficiency. And an engineering decision is the extraction pressure, the optimal pressure to extract the vapor from the turbine, which is about one fourth of uh, the maximum pressure. Please take a look at this video and well thank you following a couple of videos on solving problems. Thanks.